What's up guys, it's Flex and welcome to episode four of Ask Flex. If you guys know, this is my video series where I answer your questions. So if you have any questions for me, leave them in the comments section below and I'll try my best to answer them in the next Ask Flex video. Okay, let's get into the first question. After selling your stage two Audi A4, would you get back into the Audi brand? Well, I'm still in the Audi brand. I still have my Audi R8. But if you're asking for more like a standard platform like the A-Series or the S-Series, I'm thinking about getting into another A-Series. Not so much the S because those guys usually don't wrench themselves. They usually have a shop to all their mods. Whereas me, my audience is I prefer the audience of the A-Series because that's a lot of people. It's more affordable and there's tons of DIY mods available. So I would probably get into maybe an A3 or even an A5. I don't know yet, but we'll see. Okay, next question. What's your thoughts on Mercedes brand phasing out the standing star hood ornament? I know exactly what you're talking about. So usually on the base or luxury model, they have a standing star on the hood whereas some of the sports or AMG package, they have the flat star on the hood. I personally, this again, this is my opinion. I'm not a big fan of the standing star. I'm kind of glad they got rid of it. Um, with the way Mercedes grills are, you already have a massive Mercedes logo. And then now the new models even have little Mercedes stars in the grill. I think having a standing star is just kind of overkill. It's a little too much having something flat um, as a Mercedes logo or an AMG logo, I think is pretty clean. So that's kind of my thoughts on it. Next question, would you ever customize a W206? I'd love to see you build one. I would love to see myself build one too, but they're still not that affordable. I'm still waiting for them to depreciate and I'm starting to research to see what I can do to that car. I mean, that car is pretty fully loaded. It has a massive screen inside. It has ambient light kit. It has a kind of strange hybrid turbo four engine. I'm not sure what can be done with that engine. And also I'm not quite sure what can be done in terms of like interior mods and things like that. I could probably do aero mods on it, but I don't think that's enough to really buy that car to do modifications for the channel. I need to be able to do a lot more. So I'm still doing some research, but I would love to get into a W206 eventually, okay? What kind of advice would you give someone who wants to learn to work on their own car, but maybe doesn't have a lot of experience or knowledge? So th this is a great question. I mean, I came from nothing as well. I, I grew up when there was no YouTube. Well, YouTube wasn't as big as what it is today. Back then I was on forums and I was wrenching by myself, trial and error, just learning as I keep doing things. Um, it comes down to what you want to learn. Do you want to learn how to modify like a car by installing parts and pieces like accessories like what I do on the channel or do you want the mechanical side like changing your brake pads your rotors um, suspension oil change things of that nature for both of them there's plenty of YouTube content out there right now to show you step by step on how to do things um, I do a lot of the accessory side where there's a lot of people that do the mechanical side as well the only thing that I warn is there's a lot of content out there that's not the best way to approach things and could be very dangerous. At the end of the day, legally, I have to say, take your car to a professional. But if you do decide to wrench by yourself, just know what you're getting into. Again, there's a lot of information out there, not just YouTube, but Facebook uh, groups. There's tons of Facebook groups where there's professionals there that can help you out. And there's also uh, groups on um, videos as well. I mean, if there's someone posting a video about something, there's usually someone in the comment section or a group of people that really know what they're talking about because they've done the mod or done the install and they can walk you through kind of uh, the process there. But at the end of the day, it's going to come down to you what you decide to do. If you're willing to pick up a wrench and wrench yourself and figure it out based on some of the feedback you get from YouTube or other platforms, great. But again, tread lightly do at your own risk. Next question, this one's a big one. Where is the W205 digital gauge cluster video? So, it's been almost a month um, since I actually shot the video. It's done. I've uploaded it to YouTube, but it's set to private because I'm still working with the supplier. 
I'm making sure the software is 100% to my liking and it's good to go. Um, I don't want to release a video of the full install. People get really anxious and they want to buy it ASAP and all of a sudden they install and realize, whoa, it's still missing some pieces. It's not up to par. Um, and they get mad at me for putting a video out. So I'm taking my time here. I want to make sure it's 100% um, or close to 100% before I release that video. So hang tight a little longer. Uh, it should be done in the next few weeks, hopefully. I'm crossing my fingers because I think this is going to be a big one. So next question, how much horsepower did you get on your C250 before you sold it? Well, I don't really know. I never really dynoed the car. And to be honest, I never really wanted to dyno the car. It just didn't really make sense for me. The car did what it needed to do, which is it was really responsive. It sounded great and it performed really well for a base model C250 that's been modified. It wasn't really a performance machine, so I really didn't care if I gained 20 or 50 horsepower. The purpose of the car was just to drive around and enjoy it. It's not really to race anyone or to track the car. So again, I don't really know the horsepower. And also, if you want to gauge a car based on horsepower, that's not the best way to approach it. Horsepower is a component, but it's not the full picture of a car's performance. So here's a good example. If you take a base model C250, bone stock, and you compare it to a C250 like mine that has upgraded piping and intercooler and it's been tuned, there's a big difference, especially driving the car after 30 minutes to an hour. People need to understand that when a car's engine heats up, it robs the car of horsepower. So again, I'm making this up. If a car is 200 horsepower and in 30 minutes the engine gets super hot, you're gonna be sucking in a lot of hot air into that manifold um, and it's not gonna perform as well as a cold engine sucking in cool air. So 200 horsepower might not be 200 horsepower after 30 minutes or an hour of driving. It could be a lot less. Whereas my car with all the cooling mods and everything, I get to maintain a lot of that horsepower compared to a bone stock car. So it's not always about horsepower gained, but how much horsepower you can maintain or keep after the car heats up. So keep that in mind. Okay, last question. When are you getting a Japanese car for the channel? So I did mention that a while back that I was looking into some JDMs. It'd be great to have something on the channel that's a little different than a German car. I got my hands busy right now. I have that other project car that's sitting in my garage that I haven't even announced yet, and it's been five, six months. So that's gonna keep me busy for a while, but I want to finish that car before I even think about the next car. But it is on my radar, and hopefully I can find something pretty cool that a lot of people have that they'll be interested in watching content and DIY mods. So it's still on my radar, but um, we'll see. Okay, so that's it for today. Again, if you have any questions on anything, leave them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them in the next Ask Flex video. Until then, I'll see you next time.